and that we needed to go somewhere else. Um, I had a little bit more to say about this, but then uh, Wes Koistra, who was our assistant commissioner at the time, wrote a really lovely letter, and I just wanted to read a couple of paragraphs uh, out of that because I think he captured it so well. He says, John, it was a great privilege and advantage to work beside you on the mental health initiative. We were tasked with bringing many voices, with bringing the many voices of MHAG together to rally behind a single message and set of ideas for changing the design of mental health services. Generating agreement on such a comprehensive change among consumers, advocates, providers, counties, state and local politicians is difficult to say the least. Your contributions to this effort were enormous. You held everyone's trust, not just in the context of this effort, but from your work with others throughout your career. You were the agency's ambassador. I know you received many calls that required you to talk down individuals who were concerned about the direction that was heading or who were skeptical of the motives behind the effort. You supported the work of MHAG with a focus on facts and you quietly helped shape the development of those high-minded ideas. And then you took on the most difficult task of making these ideas work in a practical way at the ground level of service delivery. John, while you may not want to put it exactly this way, way, you've been the consummate inside guy who has the knowledge, intellect, work ethic, and people skills to work the system. But most importantly, through your principles, values, and unwavering integrity, you've worked the system to the honor of this agency's mission, which is to effectively serve the very real needs of Minnesotans. So I pass it to you. So in 2006, we managed to take all that work to the legislature and didn't pass. So instead, I note that iTunes downloaded its millionth, millionth <laughs> song in 2006. Um, that's a buck a piece. Think about that. Uh, 2007, finally, the legislation funding based on MHA principles passes as the governor's uh, mental health initiative. And the bald eagle has recovered to the point where it's removed from the endangered species list. 2008, Congress authorizes a $700 billion bailout of the financial industry and the, uh, the Emergency Economic Stabilization Act. Congress also passes the Mental Health Parity and Addiction Equity Act of 2008, and Barack Obama wins the election as the 44th President of the United States. In 2010, Congress passes the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, and John Zakel is working as a uh, legislative liaison for the department and helps Reed Sulik uh, navigate a torturous legislative session. <laughs> Reed, are you here now? Oh, he was going to try and be back in time to speak. Mm -hmm. And then John, unfortunately, through all that, decides maybe it's time to retire. <laughs> um, John, we've got um, a few things to give you here, but I think Maybe what I'll do is just continue a little bit further and we'll do it at the end since so I'm making this up as I go along. So, retire, everyone panics. What are we going to do? Well, we'll ask ourselves, what would John Zakel do? John would listen carefully to each point of view, review the data, and make sure that he understood what insights it offered. Make sure you understood the data, not just look at it or wave it around. Have the patience to do it right and work hard to get it right. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten emails from John over my Blackberry while I'm standing in my bathrobe with a cup of coffee in my hand. Uh, and then lastly, you'll find a creative way to say yes. Uh, I have seen John move mountains to say yes to somebody who had a good idea that he believed in. And I think that's one of the most important things um, that I've you know, the lessons that he gives somebody in state government. It's so easy to say no, but nothing happens when you say no. It's important to find a way to say yes. Um, so, what will John Zakel do now that he's not working for DHS anymore? We hear, we hear they could use a Jedi Master here and there. I think it's pretty close to being able to do it. <laughs> Possibilities are almost endless. <laughs> Spread his wings and take in life. Oops, 
He's already done this. <laughs> this is John in the, uh, is this in Slovenia? Yeah. Yeah. That's just amazing. Uh, but we don't think, we don't think he'll be at the Capitol. Uh, and if he is, he's more likely to be out on the lawn of the Capitol than in the building itself. Uh, we don't think he's going to be spending much time at the Twins game. Probably not bowling either. Maybe. Uh, but we do understand that he wants to get back to canoeing. Even better if he can fish while he's canoeing. Do a little bit of birding with a camera and a pair of binoculars. And maybe just a little bit of political agitation. <laughs> Thank you, John, for a wonderful career. Um, we have a, a couple of things that uh, we can present to John. Uh, one is a certificate of recognition. Uh, this certificate is presented to John Zakel for 35 excellent years of service to the state of Minnesota. Therefore, with the appreciation and respect of the people of Minnesota, this is presented to John M. Zakel, retirement date July 20, 2010, signed by Governor Tim Pawlenty. And finally, there's a gift from the state that John picked out. Maybe just tell people what it is. Well, I, I don't want to embarrass people if it didn't turn out to be what I asked for. said about me already, but I have to add a few of my own personal comments. Um, but before I do that, I want to thank John Anderson and everybody who worked to organize this. Um, hand for John. I've got some terrific colleagues. Um, Okay, so uh, I did have some personal things that I wanted to mention. Uh, we don't usually talk about these things, but today I get to say whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> so some of you know that I was born in a refugee camp. Our shelter and most of our food were provided by the United Nations. You could say I was born on international welfare. Even then, the camp was organized towards recovery and self-sufficiency. In his diary, my father writes about a social worker who helped him get thread and other materials so the refugees could produce beautiful handmade lace, which he then sold in the neighboring villages. In this way, the refugees supplemented their meager food rations and, perhaps more important, they retained a measure of pride and independence. 
My parents left Slovenia, their beloved homeland, because they feared for their lives if they stayed. Slovenia was taken over by a communist dictatorship, and opposing points of view were not tolerated. Most of my uncles and aunts spent years in prison, not for anything they did, but for their political and religious beliefs. Other families suffered even more than ours, with many thousands executed. So my parents were very grateful for the opportunity to start a new life in America. As I was growing up, they taught me the value of the basics that many Americans take for granted. Food, shelter, and freedom. Now, as you've heard, after I graduated from college, I joined VISTA. They sent me to New Ulm. And one of the many things I did there was to work with the DAC, the day program for people with mental retardation. And after a year in New Ulm, I heard that VISTA had a special program out of Fergus Falls State Hospital to develop community programs. So I signed up for that. Although I enjoyed my work, I was often depressed and unsure of myself. I received some helpful counseling from the mental health centers in New Ulm and Fergus Falls. And they provided me with the tools that I needed to figure out who I wanted to be and to take steps to achieve that. I realized that I was trying too hard to please others and that I needed to develop more confidence in myself. Now, uh, after today, I'm never going to have that problem. <laughs> but back then, but back then, it was a big deal. And I have to tell you a story for how I came up with part of the answer to get some confidence in myself. I was at a statewide DAC meeting, and someone from DHS, it wasn't Alan, but it was somebody later, uh, was there explaining state policies and funding, statewide meeting. And everybody was attacking this poor person from all sides. And there was no consensus about a better solution. I looked at that situation, and I said to myself, oh, that's the job for me. <laughs> There's obviously no way to please everyone. So I'll have to relearn to rely on my own judgment. And maybe I'll develop some confidence in myself. About six months later, uh, an opening came up and I got the job. And now, almost 40 years later, I've made some progress on my self-confidence, and a lot today. <laughs> um, and I find myself so grateful for all the other wonderful things that have come out of my employment at DHS. First, I met my wife, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Which then led to us having Johnny yeah. <laughs> and Cece. <laughs> Going for the applause lines. Johnny's getting a video, so this is for Cece. Yeah. <laughs> uh, none of which would have happened if I hadn't make, made that choice to work here at DHS. Uh, and second, I, I met many dedicated smart and hardworking people who became my friends. And third, I felt that my work made a difference as far as helping people recover and become more independent. What a privilege it's been to work here. And I'm particularly grateful for the opportunity to have been part of the legislative process I've been amazed by the range of viewpoints on all kinds of issues. Often these viewpoints are so different 
They seem totally irreconcilable. And if you think about it, it's amazing that democracy can work at all for five million people. Somehow, we bring these viewpoints together and we turn them into something that works. And this is so different from what my parents had to leave as refugees. Our, our system certainly isn't perfect, far from it. But it does work for millions of people. And much of the credit goes to you, my friends here. So, and that's a little bit about what human services and government work has meant to me. Uh, and as I look ahead to the next 40 years of my life, uh, I'm going to keep working on that self-confidence. And I look forward to the opportunities before me. I'll probably have something to do with human services and government, but not as intense as the last 40 years. And I hope I'll have continued contact with many of you. And thank you. Thank you all so much for everything. Thank you.